Google Developer Advocate. Uh, she also maintains an intimidating Lego collection, which is, I think, a perfect way of describing it because I'm definitely afraid of stepping on one Lego, let alone thousands of Legos. So she's going to talk to us a little bit about uh, machine learning. So welcome, Gabby. Good afternoon. I think it's afternoon, so good afternoon. I'm going to give you a spoiler. I'm not going to talk about machine learning per se because I don't know machine learning. I'm a developer. What I know is APIs. So what I'm going to show you and teach you here is how to use machine learning APIs for you to use in your own applications without having to know machine learning. So that's the point of my talk, and uh, I hope you, you like it. So let's start. So what is machine learning? It's about solving problems without specific rules. It's not able to learn by the example and set up new answers based on the example that you just gave to them. And I have a colleague that says that machine learning is just a thin labeler, essentially. And, and the, the truth is it's kind of like that. And if you can label anything, you can process that data and then create predictions and that kind of stuff. So I want to do an exercise with you first. How would you identify the following images that I have in here? I have an apple and I have an orange. So tell me, how will you differentiate one thing from another? Color? Shape, okay. So someone said color. And if you have this, how do you differentiate that? Just by shape, right? I could create a script before when it was uh, red and orange that could count how many pixels red I have, how many pixels orange I have, and then based on the ratio, say it's an apple, it's an orange, but like if I have a green apple, those just go out of the blue. So this doesn't work. So what about a dog and a muffin? That's easier to differentiate, right? The dog has two eyes, a nose, a mouth, and a muffin just looks nice. But what if you have this? Is that a dog number? <laughs> That's a bit difficult. Um, and this. It's a mouth or I don't know the breed, but like, like this, this one here, it's my favorite. So uh, machine learning comes to solve this kind of problems to help you identify this kind of differences without having to have a human eye to look at it. So it's loosely based on how the brain, the human brain works. It's to solve the problems without knowing specific, specifically setting up ifs to know the answer for it, or trying every possibility to know the answer for it, and enable systems that uh, improve over time. So when you have a prediction on machine learning, so you have a confidence level of that prediction is true or not, and I'm gonna show you later. So at Google we have five machine learning APIs that's for vision, the vision ones for processing images, the cloud video intelligence processing video gives you timestamps on the video, what was said and that kind of stuff. Cloud speech is similar to the video, but it can do live also. And cloud translation also, it does about a thousand pairs of different languages to translate. And cloud natural language that helps you identify um, sentiment analysis, for instance, on a given uh, sentence that you give it. So the Cloud Vision API, uh, that's the first one that I'm going to talk. I want to talk about three. It's for detecting images that are complex, it's just with a REST API request, and you can do lab label and web detection would be saying, hey, this is an elephant, uh, this is gray, and that's going to give you the tags around the image to get the text out of an image using OCR to detect logos that you have. If there is a popular logo that you have uh, around, it's gonna detect and say, hey, there is a logo here. Landmarks also detect for you. You take a picture of a landmark and you can detect where it is. Crop hints is like what you do in Instagram. It gives you a hint of how to crop the image to be square. And the explicit content detection, because a lot of the content we get sometimes is from users and we don't know what they are doing. So instead of just showing you can see, is this image safe? It's going to tell you it is or not with a confidence level. So I have a demonstration here of the Cloud Vision API. This first cell here, just ignore it. It's just to 
pretty nicely. And I want your help here. Uh, I hear I'm importing the Cloud Vision API and then setting which file it is, setting up the file URL, and getting the, the image annotated and showing up the image in the end. So this is image, where it is. Okay, go to the bridge. So let's see. I'm executing, no. It's the 25th of April bridge in Lisbon, Portugal. It's similar, but it's not the same. And you can do it with another one too. Now you don't trust me anymore. But like, what is this? Okay, let's see. No, it's a Paris Italian casino. So even images that are similar, that looks like landmarks, you're able to detect that's different. So you can also get different labels around the image. It says it's a landmark, it's a tower, uh, tourism, because it's Las Vegas, so it's involved with tourism, and, and other tags. And here I'm getting a random image because we have this thing called web det detection. And you can say, hey, I want to see visually similar images to the one that I just uploaded here. This is useful. If you're looking, you can have full match images too. Uh, if you're looking, let's say you took a picture and you want to see if someone in the web got your picture copied on their blog or something like that, you can look for copyright infringement with this to know if someone took the same picture as you and put on their content. So that's an use for that. This one is to get visually similar, not necessarily the same, and showing off here. So it's executing, go internet. And this is not the same image, but it's similar. You see it's the same monument, and I'm getting a random image. And if I get it again, it's another picture of the same thing. So it's able to detect not only that is a landmark, which landmark it is, and find similar images to it, too. There's also a cool thing called AutoML that I'm going to talk in the end. And uh, if, if it is, if there's time, I'm going to show you to you. So the Google Cloud Vision, the code in the end is just this. It's 13 lines with comments. And with that, you can input put any, anywhere in your code to just figure out what you're being uploaded or if it is a safe image, for instance, or not. And in this case, getting a landmark. The next one, uh, I'm sorry. If you use Giphy, you probably use Cloud Vision. You're not use, not don't, don't, know, don't realize. And if you want to read a bit more, just look at their engineering blog. They have a, a blog post saying how to use uh, Cloud Vision in production. So when you search by some tags there, you probably are using a Cloud Vision API to get that answer. Second one, the Google Cloud Translation. Uh, it translates over 100, actually 120 languages now. And you can have a thousand pairs or so more, as I said before, of comparison. And you can use to transla translate text from one language to a target language, or detect the language that, that that's a text is from. Let's say you got a flyer, a post, and you don't know where, where what is written and what language it is. So someone sends you an email, you don't know the language, you can use the Vision API to uh, the translation, translation API to detect which language is being said there. So one of the examples that we have, it's the Google Translate app. And you can just show an image and kind of combines the vision, getting the OCR, and translates whatever it's in there to another language, for it, so you know. I have a little demonstration here. So this, I'm gonna just say something in Japanese, which I don't know how to pronunciate, I'm not gonna try. And I'm gonna target translate to English. And once I say, after instantiating the client here, once I say which is text, or what is the target language, notice uh, I didn't say it is Japanese at the beginning. It, it's gonna figure out that's from Japanese to English. And that's gonna be what it's written there. And you can translate to any language that you want. Just that, if it is possible, we have a, uh, 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 on the website there is a list of the languages that are possible to be translated. So you can use this to translate any text that you have, that user input that you got, and you can get it in different languages, especially if you're using a multi-language application. 
So this is the code uh, with comments and the prints. Uh, it's about six, 18 lines, uh, and it, that's that does the translation for you. So you don't have to go to the Google Translate itself to translate for you. You can just use the API. And the, my favorite one is the natural language. Uh, the natural language API helps you understand uh, with a simple request things like extract entities. And entities here are not like entities on the web. It's like, oh, I went to a restaurant and ordered sushi. And it's going to say that restaurant is a local and sushi, it's a food, and that's a type of entity. And detect the sentiment on a sentence. And when I was, I'm Brazilian, so when I was learning Portuguese, uh, Portuguese is not an easy language, it had like this thick book on analysis, uh, syntax analysis, and I could never get that thing figured out. And with this um, API, you can actually get, say, this is a verb, this is a conjunction, this is an adverb, and you can stop having to worry about that. And in the end, classify content, but there is a caveat. The, cl the classifying content API only works with English. It doesn't work with other languages. So first off, I have the sentiment API here. I just said I went to the restaurant and ordered sushi. The food was really good. Even though it was negative, the score is still on the neutral zone because it's, I'm not seeing anything bad about it. It's just a bit, see, it's a neutral. But the overall score of the whole document, it's positive, it's 0 0.3. And the magnitude says, like, it's from 0 to infinity. It tells you how much intention and sentiment is on that thing. So 0 0.9 is the whole overall magnitude of the document. The food was really good, I think, because of the word good, it's 0 0.8. It's a bit higher. So as I say, syntax analysis and analyzing that sentence that I just wrote be before, we can see how the word words uh, depend on each other. So you see here that root, go, go, root uh, the root word is go, and, and, and that's the lemma, which means like it's like the main thing on a sentence. In this case, is go and order. That's two things that you couldn't, if you remove from the sentence, it doesn't make any sense. And the, the food was really good. It's the B for that. And tells which word depends on each thing. So I would have totally cheated on my exams if I had that before. But that's, that's available for you too. Content classification. Uh, as I said before, it's only in English, but notice here, I don't mention, it says it's baseball, and I said before, I always have a confidence level that says how much confident it is on the prediction. It, you don't see baseball mentioned on the news there. You just see some names of a team maybe, and a, a, a player, but it knows that that player, it's from a baseball team, and that it, hence this probably with 99% chance, it's a baseball article. So that's part of it. I have a demonstration here to integrate the three APIs that I showed you before. So I'm going to get the Google Cloud Vision API and going to import an image from our article, translate it to English, detect uh, and see this, what that article is about. So if you know Portuguese, you may know what this is about. But if you don't know, you can figure it out. So I took a picture from the newspaper, and I have this article here. So I'm going to translate. Let me execute this first one. OK. I'm going to trans uh, not translate. I'm going to get the OCR of that image. So notice that it came with the same break things, break, uh, break lines as the article came. And it has all the, the text from there. But when you translate, the break lines doesn't matter because I'm going to tell you, it's quite, it's not 100% accurate, but it's good enough just to be able to be used formally as a translation. So here it's a translation, and it does a translation even though the text was not well formatted, was able to do the translation. And on the language classification, it's going to tell you what it is about. And with 82.9%, it's about jobs and education with regards to education. 
So the article actually was about SATs in Brazil, how students were going to take the SATs. So it is about education. So that's one of the demos. Uh, and as I said before, if I had time, I was going to talk about AutoML vision. So AutoML, it's like, let's say you have, um, this is all pre-trained models with Google data, the public data sets that we got from the internet. But let's say you don't want to use that. You want to use your own data to classify content. And that, if you use that, that data belongs to you. It does not go to the Google's model, only for your model. And in this case here, I wanted to train clouds. And what best place to predict the clouds than the cloud? <laughs> there is no other place. So I wanted to predict clouds. I know there is way more than five types of clouds, but for simplification purposes, I only did five in here. Oh. Oh. Yes, I only did five in here. And once you do that, you can train your model because you import the images as a upload from, you can upload from your computer. Or if you have a bucket on Google Cloud Storage, you say the CSV, you say the image URL and the label, and you can import that. And once you train your image, you can see here the confusion matrix, uh, matrix of how that, that thing performs. And you can, you can see that auto stratus, it's highly confused with cirrus and cumulus. But here, the higher the value on the diagonal, the better model you have. Probably the problem is with that, it's because I don't have much outer stratus pictures. I only have, uh, you need at least 800 of each to train a model, but I only had 135 and all the other ones I have over 400. So that's why it's confusing for the model. And I took a picture, not here, because I tried to take a picture outside and there is no clouds outside. So I took a picture and I'm going to show you the picture uh, when my, where's my mouse? So this is a picture in Florida, <laughs> which was nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to predict what type of cloud that is. I'm not sure if the prediction is correct because I'm not a cloud specialist. I, I once was on a talk that the guy, my guy was specifically a meteorologist and he's like, your prediction is wrong. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but let's try to predict it. And that, there is a thing called, uh, you need to warm up the model. I hope the model is warmed up to predict. Yeah, it is. So this image was not on my collection. It's a, a picture that I took myself. And with 97.3%, you can see that's a serious type. And Everything here is tried to sum to one in the end, but like um, you can have at, at, at most one as 100% confidence, but that's not always uh, possible. So if a high confidence level, you can see that's a serious type of um, cloud. And with that, I'm gonna go with questions and that's it. Yes, uh, so you use, uh, interesting that you said sign language because one of the examples we have, it's with sign languages, but one of the difficulties is because I don't remember which letter was like really complicated to, to make and was hard to get images. So we, we had this friend that, I'm not the, the, the developer advocate that usually does machine learning. I do as a side, side gig sometimes. But like uh, she was training the model, and everybody had to learn a bit of sign language to take pictures to her, so she could train a model. So yes, you can do that. But you need to have data. That's the, the hardest part, you know. By data, you mean the, the science You need to train the model. To train the model, you need to to have images and the label for sure that you know for sure that's right, so you can train the model. So yes, it's possible okay. without any code. Google Cloud, um, can you talk a few words about how easy it is to set up something like this? Because it's 
Uh, it's really easy because uh, you need to, need to go to, uh, if you use Google Cloud, you need to go to a project and enable the API because the, the API can disable. So enable the API and then once it is enabled, if you deploy inside Google Cloud, you don't need to have credentials because you can set up, you can say, if it is on the same project, you can say, hey, it's the same project, it has access to these APIs. But the problem is if you're doing local, you need to create a service account. And that's the hardest part. But, and what you would do, extra step here, would be on the, when you call the client here, you would say credential file and pass the, the file path to, the, to the, the, the code. So that's the hardest part that would be. Everything else is the same. Okay. I have a question. Two questions, James. So the classification, you said it's only English right now? Yes. Is there any plans to expand that? I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> and then my second question is on classification. Um, you had categories in there. Is that something that you picked, or does that come with the service? It comes with the service. Uh, uh, you can actually, there is AutoML for natural language too. So you can uh, create, say, let's say you have tickets, support tickets, and you want to categorize which category is, and you want to be able to predict that kind of for future tickets. So if you know the, the, the label that it is currently, you can train the model based on that, and you gave the category, not, not me and in the end have that predicting model for you, you know, without code again. Any other questions? Well, thanks. Thank you.